is sex addiction trauma based? I'm not going to say always, I'm not going to say every single time. I am going to say though, that the vast majority of the time, I believe that underneath, not just sex addiction, but all addiction is trauma. And so it goes like this, at the surface, you have acting out. Underneath the acting out, you have the preoccupation. That's the mental space, which is really where the compulsivity lives. The thoughts that, that keep moving forward, moving forward, moving forward, playing it out, thinking it through. What if, what if, what if, until the behavior actually follows. Well, the preoccupation, it's not just there. It doesn't just drop in from the sky. It's serving a function. And the function of the preoccupation is, is that it, it brings a feeling of relief from the affect dysregulation. So there, it could be chronic shame. It could be anxiety. It could be all the, I mean, lots of different things, but there's an inability to regulate one's own affect in helpful healing ways. All right. And so the preoccupation brings relief, but eventually brings acting out. And what does the acting out do? It actually, in the end, reinforces the affect dysregulation. We have to ask the question though, so, so this can be its own cycle, right? Because the, the acting out is feeding the affect dysregulation. But why is the affect dysregulation there to begin with? Developmental deficits, developmental deficits, which is to say early trauma. What if there's acting out without compulsivity? I would want to have a conversation with that client about whether or not it's true that there's not compulsivity. Compulsivity doesn't have to look like beads of sweat and panic and all this. It could be, there could be compulsive thoughts behind it, patterns of thinking. I would really want to explore that. If there's not compulsivity or, or that addiction drive, then it's not sex addiction. Think about like with drinking, you can have something called problematic use of alcohol with someone not meeting criteria for substance use disorder or, or you know, full-blown alcoholism. So there's a space where something is still being used to self-medicate and it's being used in a harmful way without it being full-blown addiction. That's possible as well. So in other words, this is just my picture to try to show that underneath this addiction cycle, there's an origin in developmental deficits, which is to say early trauma.